Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook. As always, thank you for checking out this video. If you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. I do a lot of guitar related content as well as recording content that's geared towards guitarists. So if those things sound like they might be helpful or something you're into, definitely hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. Today we're talking about a really popular type of pedal that is really undercovered in the YouTube world. And this pedal for me is probably one of my non-negotiable pedals when I'm building a pedal board. Probably comes second to a tuner. I have more of this type of pedal than any other type of pedal and it's really become a part of my style as well as just I need it practically. Um, how I've integrated it into my pedal board and how I build my pedal boards. It's just something that I have to have to play. I'm talking about volume pedals. Today I'm going to walk you through kind of my journey with volume pedals through the years, what I've used, what I've liked, what I haven't liked, and some things I think you should look for when you are looking for your next volume pedal. I just bought a brand new one and it's probably one of the best I've had, so we're going to talk about that as well. All right, let's get into it. So it all started with this. This is the Ernie Ball volume pedal, the, the big boy here. Um, I've had several of these through the years. This is actually the first one that I ever owned. Um, it's, it's currently broken and kind of taken apart, but um, you can even see where I, I drilled into the chassis here to zip tie it down to my pedal board um, just because it is so heavy and um, monstrous. But um, I used Ernie Ball volume pedals for years and they're built like a tank except for one thing, the string. They break a lot. I found that I was going through strings every six months or so, and I eventually had to move on to something else. The things that I do love about the Ernie Vol volume pedal are that they have a tuner out, which really became something that I had to have. I love that I can just volume pedal back and tune and then push it forward and get right back into it. Also, the fact that I'm always going to my tuner, I always have signal going to the tuner, allows me to, even when I'm playing, see if what I'm playing is in tune. This is especially helpful for slide, if I wanna double check and make sure that my notes are in tune, um, or I can't hear myself as well and I wanna check it. Um, you know, That became a really great feature for me and something that I kinda of have to have in a volume pedal. Um, there are ways to do it without a volume pedal. You can split your signal before a volume volume pedal, but um, it just makes it convenient and easy when it's something that's a part of a volume pedal. The only thing about this is if volume pedals aren't made well, um, or you know they're just made in a certain way, that, that does introduce tone suck. The Ernie Balls are that way. When you use the tuner out, there is a bit of tone suck that happens, and you can definitely notice a difference in your tone um, when you're using the tuner out as opposed to when you're not using it. The next one we're going to talk about is another legendary volume pedal, and it's from Ernie Ball again. It's the VP Junior. Um, this one's a little different. It's got a couple of different modifications, um, including the GHS mod. This includes a buffer so that we don't get the tone suck from the tuner out. Um, one downside about that is that it requires power now, so it's going to take up another spot on your board. I don't love that the power is on the side here. I typically put my volume pedals to the far right on my board. And so I always have to inset this a little bit so that power jack isn't hanging off the side of the board and can get broken or, or knocked out or anything like that. So that's, that's a minor, a minor thing that's, um, you know, not ideal for me, but, um, still a great volume pedal. The other thing that I did to this is that I added the Kevlar string from Schnobel tone, but this took my string life from about six months, I mean, pretty consistently, I was breaking strings every six months to, um, I use this one about a year and it's had no issues. Uh, I mean, it doesn't even look worn whatsoever. So I think he might call these like a lifetime string or something like that. And 
that's been my experience. I mean, this thing has been rock solid since I changed the string out for that. So I've, I've been super happy with this one overall. Again, getting rid of the tone suck and then solving the string issue, it makes us a win. Now, I will say that, you know, after you buy uh, a volume pedal and have GHS modded or buy a brand new one from them and then change the string, um, it's starting to get a little more expensive. You know, I think maybe they're like 150 or so from JHS. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'll link it down in the description. But, um, you know, you're starting to get into kind of a higher end volume pedal at that point with the mods and everything. But again, it's rock solid. This is the Dunlop Volume X. And this is probably my second favorite volume pedal. Um, they're affordable. They're really durable. I've used this one for about two years and it didn't get scratchy. There's no string to break. Tuner out, it can be used as an expression pedal. You know, it's passive, it doesn't require power. In the end, it's a great volume pedal. I feel like when I was using this compared to the uh, JHS modded Ernie Ball, the smaller one, um, that it did introduce a little bit of tone suck. It just, maybe it's because it doesn't have a buffer in it. I don't know, but I just, I felt like it affected my tone slightly negatively not a huge deal. Again, I used it for two years and was super happy with it. So that's pretty nitpicky, but overall the Dunlops are great options. They come in three different sizes. I prefer the larger size. Um, I have a hard enough time keeping my foot on the bigger side and not hitting other pedals um, and accidentally hitting knobs and adjusting things. So um, I do prefer the larger size, but if you have limited space on your board, the smaller options are great. Now, I wanna talk about one thing that I hear a lot of guitarists talk about when they talk about volume pedals, and that's the sweep of the volume pedal. This is not a big hang up for me. I know some guys who swear by the sweep on the Ernie Balls and they try other volume pedals and they just hate the sweep. This is not a big deal for me because ultimately whatever I'm using, I'm going to get used to. Um, now, you know, obviously if a volume pedal just has a really extreme um, kind of weird sweep on it, that's not going to work. But, you know, the, the small variances of the sweep between all the volume pedals for me isn't a big deal. I'm going to get used to that. I'm going to kind of acclimate to how it's different and, and use it just the same. So this is a Goodrich 120, and these are loved by pedal steel players. Um, you know, the downside for me on this one is that there's no tuner out. Some people mod them for tuner outs. Um, typically these days I'm using this for pedal steel, but it's also been on my guitar board as well. The nice thing about these that I like is that this bottom plate comes off and you can easily access the pot and the string. I have had to change the pot out a couple of times on this. They get dirty and scratchy. Um, it has a really thick kind of braided string on it that um, is much more durable than the Ernie Ball strings. Um, I have not had to replace that um, because it is, again, it's thick and it's braided. They do wear though. So I could see that being an issue over time and eventually needing to be changed. Because that bottom plate comes off, it's a lot easier to work on and that's definitely appreciated if you've ever tried to change a string on an Ernie Ball because it is a pain. So let's talk for a second about active and passive volume pedals. Now, a passive volume pedal would be something like the Ernie Ball or the Dunlop or even the Goodrich. In theory, these should just work like the volume knob on your guitar. It's just another pot in line with your signal. Where we run into issues is, is when we want to add a tuner out. We're essentially you know, splitting the signal into two and due to the low impedance of a guitar, um, that can really affect your tone. So that's why companies tend to add buffers in when there is a tuner out, or ideally you want a buffer present. That way your tone stays intact, but you're able to split the signal um, into two different paths. Now, I really don't know all the technical details about how this works, but what I do know is that if you are using your volume pedal to split your signal to a tuner, ideally Ideally, you want to have some sort of buffer present. Um, that way, you're not introducing any tone suck or any variation in your tone um, by using a volume pedal. Now, I did mention this before, but you can split your signal before your volume pedal and use a buffered splitter of some sort. For me, I just like having them all in one enclosure. It's less to worry about and takes up less pedal board space.
I recently got a brand new volume pedal and it seems to have all the features that I want in a really durable package. It's this guy from Leela. It has a tuner out, adjustable tension. It also has a gain control that goes from unity gain to giving you a 20 dB boost if you want it. It uses a different type of thing to control the volume. It uses a magnetic sensor that they say should be wear free. So this thing in theory should last forever. It feels great under your foot. It's definitely on the larger side, but again, I prefer larger volume pedals. The only downside really about this that, that I haven't loved is how the jacks are positioned here. Um, and then there's this little flange here. It kind of makes it difficult to plug certain things in like this power jack, like you have to come straight out and it just ultimately makes this thing take up even more room. I could see myself maybe getting a Dremel and trimming off some of this flange here so that I have a little more, um, I, that I have more options of plugging things in. I would love to be able to use a right angle power jack here. And, um, you know, that might give me some other options for, for plugging things in and it not taking up as much space. Um, another option I could do is elevate this so that I could run the jacks down. But again, this flange is present, so I might have to trim some of that off. Ultimately, this definitely was on the more expensive side, but I'm hoping that it'll be the last volume pedal I have to buy, at least for a long time. Hopefully this gives you some good info on volume pedals. Obviously I can't cover everything, but tried to cover what I've used and what's worked well for me. I'll also link a couple more options down in the description below. I also wanna let you guys know about a brand new course that I'm currently working on that should be out in about the next month or so. Uh, it's all about creating complementary guitar parts and layering guitar parts. A lot of this info is stuff that I think about when I'm creating my demos and I'm layering a lot of guitars together. Not only is it useful for that, but it's also useful for most any musical situation where you're playing with other instrumentalists. Just concepts and ideas to think about to make all the parts work together. If that's already out at the time you're watching this video, it will also be linked in the description below. That's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you out there.